Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're looking at the Wyndham Weaponry 20-inch government rifle, which is basically it's an M16A4. Now this was sort of fun for me because you know most of the ones I play, I, I, I test are using optics. I'm using all these modern uh, optics and red dots and all that kind of stuff. It felt really fun. It was really fun to go back to the basic rifle, you know, a basic M16A4 rifle or A2, depending on how you want to look at it with the with a detachable carry handle with the same A2 rear sights. So it was rather fun going back to this. And I have to say, Wyndham Weaponry is a company that has done incredible work. Uh, this gun here is, uh, you know, it's probably as flawless as you can make one of these rifles. Uh, fit and finish, uh, quality, everything turned out really, really well. I want to take a minute, I want to go over what Wyndham Weaponry is, because many of you aren't familiar with uh, where it comes where it came from. And their history, I think, is very, very important, because that also plays into what makes these weapons as nice as they are. In 1973, Bushmaster was opened by a gentleman named Matt Gwynn. Uh, Matt Gwynn was a former Special Forces guy from Vietnam. Uh, he also was the designer and owner of MGI Hydra. Uh, he's the one to develop the, the MGI Hydra, which Wyndham Weaponry now sells as the MCS. And in 1976, he was sold the company to a gentleman named Richard Dyke. Now, Mr. Dyke has been the owner and operator of, of Bushmaster Firearms right up through when he sold it. 1990, it was acquired by Quality Products Incorporated, which still was under uh, Richard Dyke. In 2006, however, uh, Richard Dyke sold Bushmaster to Cerberus, and Cerberus was a capital management company for $70 million. Unfortunately, as part of that, Bushmaster <clears throat> was now moved to Illion, New York. Uh, and unfortunately, once Cerberus took, took over Bushmaster, there's only some of the employees who went with Bushmaster who left uh, Maine and went to New York. And of course, Bushmaster had been made in, in Alabama and several different places. The quality of the guns really took a hit. Um, after it was sold to Cerberus, it was really a hit and miss on what kind of a quality gun you were getting. When you had a, the, the original Bushmaster firearms, they were known for making very, very high quality firearms. Uh, they were the first ones to give a true M16A2 to the American public. You know, uh, Colt gave us the uh, AR-15A2 Sporter 2 government model, which didn't have the proper lower receiver. So those of us who got out of the military, you know, Cold War era, uh, we wanted a rifle that was exactly like we carried. Even though I carried a Colt, I ended up buying the Bushmaster because the Bushmaster was identical, with the exception of the name that was on the side. But uh, under Cerberus, they, they took a lot of hits uh, for as far as quality up and down. You really didn't know what you were getting. And then in 2013, uh, it was taken over by Freedom Group which, again, it led to much more lower quality. However, because of the conditions that were going on at the time politically with school shootings and with all that kind of stuff, Cerberus had decided that they were going to cease focus on the black rifle manufacturers because they also owned uh, Bushmaster, they owned DPMS, uh, and TAPCO, I mean, it was who, who had high-capacity magazines. Those companies basically ceased production. And they were for, you know, focusing, focusing more on Remington uh, and more of the hunting, hunting end of it. Well, in 2020, uh, Bushmaster uh, trademark was sold to Crotalis Holding, I believe it was called, uh, which basically Franklin Armory, and they have reopened their doors. Well, in 2011, uh, there was a there was a non, there was a non compete clause that was uh, done with Richard Dyke and the new Bushmaster Firearms. So after that that was over with, uh, he went and decided I want to build guns again, and he still owned the building that uh, uh, you know, Roosevelt Place and went to Maine where the guns were originally produced. And he went to all the former employees who stayed and saw if they were interested in, in, in reopening under a new name. And, of course, they were. And he was able to get funding within a day or two uh, to open up Wyndham Weaponry. And those were the original Bushmaster people. Those were the ones who were manufacturing these guns back when they had the really good quality name. They were the ones who were manufacturing the rifles that people really, really loved. And he was able to, to build Wyndham Weaponry up very, very, very quickly to make some of the most incredible rifles that were out there. And again, when you look at the mechanics on this, you look at the fit and finish on it, they just did an absolutely gorgeous job. I want to do a review on this one because, again, you know, I wanted to go back to more of the basics uh, with the iron sights. So basically what we have here is an M16A4 variation. Uh, the, only, the only change I noticed on here that was different was they added M4 feed ramps, which the, technically the TDP for the M16A4 requires rifle feed ramps, but it doesn't matter. In fact, it is an enhancement putting uh, the M4 feed ramps on there. And they don't use the F mark front sight base because they use the proper front sight. Not, not, not really necessary under these conditions. So when we look at the rifle, we're looking at the barrel, which is a mil spec chromoly vanadium. Uh, it is a one in seven inch twist. Now, Wyndham Weaponry was doing a lot of one in nines for a long time. And those of you who were familiar with Bushmaster uh, in the early years, uh, they liked to go with the one in nine because it was optimal for the 62 grain projectile. Um, back in the earlier days, this is this is pre-global war on terror, people weren't shooting 77 grain OTM. So the uh, one in seven was not necessary. 
So after the M16A2s were out and after the uh, M4s came out, they were sort of forced to switch over to the 1 and 7, which was a good thing, so they could use that wide variety of ammunition. So chrome-molly vanadium, uh, this is a mil-spec chrome-plated boring, boring chamber, which again, thank God they didn't go with the nitride. I was very happy to see them go with the original uh, chrome plating, uh, which I'm a very big fan of, and the manganese phosphate standard A2 compensator. Looking at the rear, it's a regular standard mil-spec A2, A4, uh, uh, glass-filled nylon uh, stock with proper uh, plate. Now the carrying handle, detachable carrying handle. Wyndham Weaponry is the only company that I am aware of who actually zeroes their front, their, their sights with a laser in the factory. So that basically puts the gun right on paper when uh, you go to zero it. However, this particular one, when I went to zero this thing at 25 yards to get my BZO, I didn't have to touch it. It was directly dead on. I didn't have to, even do, to do a thing, So, which is really cool, uh, not having to do that. Uh, so I was very happy. Of course, you need to remove the carrying handle. You can put your optics on here. I didn't mess with that. I just wanted to use the iron sights. That was what was sort of fun about this rifle. Standard uh, handguards on the M16A2 M4. Of course, if you so chose, you could get the M5 RAS uh, to give it that more M16A4 look if you so chose. But this is a standard government profile barrel, standard gas tube. Lower receiver, again, all, M all current M16A2 A4. You have the uh, witness on the right side for the safety. You have the uh, magazine release the proper location, proper mil spec type finish. And this finish here also is, is not reflective. It doesn't shine. It's more of a flat color, which is very, very nice. When we open it up, we pull the bolt carrier out. We have a standard M16 type bolt carrier. This is also manganese phosphate and chrome plated, which I was happy to see. But this is a standard mil spec type bolt carrier. Uh, very, very well made. There's no, no real machining marks on it. Flawless finish. Did a really good job. On the inside, you have a standard uh, mil spec type trigger assembly, standard buffer, standard bolt catch. Everything here, again, if you're looking for an M16A4, this is an excellent version. Now, if you are looking for those, you do have a couple options. You have Wyndham Weaponry, you have the Colt AR-15A4, and you also have Palmetto State. Palmetto State being the cheaper uh, of, the th of the three. Uh, I imagine this one here is around 1192, so this is probably about comparable to the to the Colt. Choosing between this one and the Colt, it's it's difficult, but I have to say, fit and finish wise, the way that the, you know the, the parkerizing is on this thing and the anodizing, this just looks a little bit nicer than the, than the one that Colt puts out. Colt's giving you the current jet black uh, color. This gives you more of that flat char charcoal black, so so probably a little bit better uh, fit and finish uh, than the Colt has at, at, at this point. But this rifle here, again, I want just to I want to get back to the iron sight. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one to range. We're gonna see how it shoots.
Well, as you can see, I was shooting at my challenge targets. Uh, my challenge targets at 100 yards and 30 shots, 30 hits. Uh, didn't even have to mess with the iron sights on here. Those of you who are interested in getting some steel targets, we do have a, a good code for them, uh, which is 10% off of all of their steel targets. So we shot uh, up to 200 yards with this one, and again, iron sights, it was fine. It shot as good as my eyes could see. Uh, the ammunition that I used was mostly uh, the Black Hills 5.56 millimeter 55 grain OTM. Um, I did have a couple of magazines of, of uh, you know, Federal M XM855. You know, it didn't seem to make much of a difference out to 200 yards, which when I, when I shot it was just as accurate. Um, but it was a lot of fun shooting, you know, the regular old iron sights. And again, going back to what the old basic combat rifle was, you know, again, you know, I, I tend to use a lot of optics just because of my eyesight and whatnot. It just, uh, it's it's much easier. But this one was this one was fun. They also make an M4, which is a standard government M4. Um, I do hope to be having a few more of the wind and weaponry guns to do some tests on, uh, bring you some more videos on them. We just did one on, on their MCS, and I hope to get one of their 308s, uh, one of their uh, other other 556 rifles in the near future to do some reviews on. But overall, wind and weaponry is a uh, premium quality. Uh, there is nothing second rate about them. They are up there with uh, all the big boys for as far as quality is concerned. Um, the those of us again, those of us who are Cold War era. These kind of guns are, are awesome uh, in, in, in their standard configurations because that's what we carried. You know, back you know, when I was in the 1990, 91 era, we didn't have the M5 RASs or M4 RASs. We had round handguards. Um, we, had, we had we had standard M16 A2 rifles. And this, again, for, for, except for the, the carry handle being removable, basically is the exact same thing. So I do hope you all enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.